Hi, and thanks so much for trying BriefCatch. I'm Ross, the developer, and I want to take you on a quick tour of the product and show you some of what it can do. So let's take a look here. I'm going to show you a Word document that's got a couple of examples, and I'll try to just walk you through the product as, as I would perhaps if I, you know, were looking at it for the first time and trying to show you a little bit what it does. So uh, first thing first, you can see, of course, we're in Word and you simply select brief catch wherever you are. And first thing to do is to decide of the three modes we have, style, consistency, and all, uh, where would you like to begin? So style really looks at wording issues, kind of broadly construed, any, anything involving the right word, tightening, uh, cleaning things up, finding errors, getting ideas on different, more precise verbs or prepositions, that's all gonna be style. Uh, consistency is more sort of right or wrong when you're really just looking to fix spacing issues or inconsistent punctuation or blue looking citation errors, wrong words and the like. And then as you can guess, the all mode is essentially all the above and a little bit more. Okay, so all also looks at some more systematic patterns in the document. It might give you some insights into how you're dealing with case law or if you have a sort of sentence structure pattern you might not be aware of, that's all gonna be in all. All right, let's do style. Style's a good place to start. It's also uh, from our surveys of our, our paid users, the most popular mode. So you can see it's taken this draft, it's really two different short drafts in one, and it's, it's actually taking about 10 or 11,000 different rules or algorithms and comparing the text against all those and pretty quickly as you can see from the yellow flagged a bunch of language that we might want to reconsider. So the user interface over here, it's pretty obvious how it works. You have something flagged. You'll notice sometimes it will give you just one choice. Other times you'll have several and really you just rely on your judgment if there are two, five, maybe sometimes 10 or 11 choices. That means that in this type of a phrase or sentence, there are really many good alternatives and really the writer's the one to know uh, but otherwise, a lot of these are a little bit more straightforward. If you don't want to accept a change, it's incredibly easy, you just move on. And if you don't like an entire class of changes, that's easy too. You just click ignore all and it, all the related flags will disappear. So just want to give you a little sense of how it works. So we're just going to for now move from beginning to end. Of course, you can start wherever you want. Uh, right off the bat, this is actually the wrong name for the court over there in Delaware. So. We have that coded. That's supposed to be the Court of Chancery. Uh, here's a first sort of judgment call. You really need here in, here and after in the defined term. A lot of uh, readers don't like those, but I also know they're fairly, fairly popular. That's why you have a choice you can always ignore. But uh, just to make myself happy, we're gonna accept that change here. Next, you have lots and lots, thousands and thousands of different permutations we have of verb, verb, adjective, noun, preposition phrases. Uh, here's an example. A lot of times the adjective here, meaningful, doesn't really add anything. Just trying to help you streamline, punch things up. I think this probably is better off as just justified. We'll keep it. Uh, here we've got kind of a modifier combo. Uh, good, good time to stop and think, what exactly do I want to get across? Critically important, it's a little bit much. I'll just call it pivotal since it's a very big deal in the world of Mature adverse change. Uh, here, in the case of, we have just on to in. And then next, we have you know, another actual mistake that's now not going to be a mistake because the program will fix it at all. Uh, has just one period. If it's done right after the all, this one's wrong. So good to see here. Some of these things really, I mean, everyone has different priorities or cares about different rules. This kind of thing, a lot of people would ignore, and that's great, honestly, as far as I'm concerned, but technically you're not supposed to have two of the verb site. So for those who care or work for people who care, that's a freebie. Uh, next one, I did a little too fast, got a little too excited, a little trigger happy, but all these subsequent to prior to phrases that a lot of attorneys and judges write uh, will be punched up for you. Similar point with the word further, that can be a bad habit, also changing upon to on. And then here, good example for you of a verb that we all tend to type probably a little too much, kind of like demonstrate, really can mean all different sorts of things. 
Uh, not entirely clear since I didn't write this what the attorneys actually meant. So for now, I will guess, since it's a whistleblower revealing, this is just a way to have a stronger sentence structure. We'll just do a couple more. Uh, factually intense, that's an example of the hundreds, if not thousands of legal terms that people often get off a little bit. This is actually a fact intensive opinion, not factually intensive. That's changed. That's a way to clean up these verb phrases. A lot of, speaking of verb, verb, ad, adverb combinations, it will help you have more vivid, more precise, more interesting verbs. We'll do one there. And then one last one for a long time and so forth. Okay, so that's the style mode. I don't wanna belabor it. I wanna show you a little bit of the, the consistency mode. So by the way, this is a good time for me to show you when you wanna just sort of clean everything up, we'll just hit clear catch. You notice everything disappears from brief catch. And then since we do not for these purposes want to accept any changes, cause I wanna show you something else. We reject all the changes and we're back to square one. All right, let's do consistency. So consistency is uh, definitely for people who are more in a rush or don't have the need or the luxury to worry about some of the subtleties. Uh, so you just want to catch mistakes. Good example here. Again, that one comes back. That's wrong. Let's fix it. Uh, here it's noticing that there's a closed quotation mark without an opening one. Once it's flagged, usually the lawyer can instantly remember where the quote started. So there we go. Uh, I, I do include out and out punctuation errors and consistency as opposed to ones that are a little bit more subjective. This is just wrong. Uh, no comma after that because the quote had no comma. Uh, there's a common typo, not set froth like uh, cappuccino, but set forth. Now, this is a good thing for you to see. Uh, again, a lot of people don't care or need to care about some of this, but for those who really need everything to be just right, and notice that you used toward earlier and now toward, so it's flagging that in case you want to reconcile. We'll do it the American way today and make both of these toward. So, oh, I want to show you really quickly two more things. Uh, in this mode. Notice it doesn't take positions on controversial issues uh, because it wouldn't be right for it or me to. So you want one space after a period, great. You want two spaces, great. We're not gonna resolve that today. But we'll, what it will do is see what you're doing the most often and then show you when you're deviating. Okay, so if you basically have one space after a period as here and you have two by accident, it will actually flag that and fix that for you as well. Example from a brief, I'll show you really quickly this kind of really annoying thing like the comma after CEG should not be italicized. I'm gonna catch that and fix it for you. And also the blue booking error too. The scoring system uh, actually gets a lot of people to post scores on social media, uh, you may know. And what it does is it compares the document against a huge universe of, of indicators or metrics or whatever the trendy term is these days. And those are all based on my, my analysis, you know, aided by experts, my analysis of top-notch writing, legal and judicial writing in particular. So the scores are not random at all. It's all data-based, empirically based. And what, what a lot of people enjoy is not just seeing their score, which maybe will make them happy if it's quite high, uh, but actually seeing their score improve. So you can see right now, I'm not gonna go over these. You can experiment with them yourselves. You can see there are five measures. One is actually um, not too great, right? We have a long way to go. If we accepted all the changes we made earlier, I promise the scores would jump, but those that's a good form of feedback. And then I also wanna show you a little bit along the same lines. This, uh, frankly, not as many users use um, as use scores, but you know, I think it for some people can be helpful. It gives you some feedback on your document uh, in a global sense, and sometimes we'll even let you know certain words or phrases you're using much more often than uh, most attorneys do. We'll give you insights into that and give you some more global feedback as well. Most people use it as a way to uh, surprisingly improve their documents uh, one by one, but as you can probably see, it does have some other benefits uh, too, according to a lot of the most enthusiastic users at least. So one is there is a sort of subtle, uh, easy growth or training or development or learning component because although 
I didn't get into these today because you'll see them during the trial. A lot of the explanations for the changes have little rules or tricks or things that help people remember and apply some of the principles going forward. So that can be uh, something that, again, it's a type of training without actually spending time or devoting time to training officially. So people find that sometimes very helpful. Um, and then it's also sometimes a way to track changes or developments in your own writing. So that's probably not gonna happen in a, you know, in a short trial, but people who are now you know, in third, fourth year of uh, subscribing to BriefCatch, uh, tell me and tell others that they're actually noticing, not only that they're getting better, better reactions to their writing, but they're even seeing just in the way uh, the editing function works, what it does or doesn't flag and the way the scores are that you know, there's real proof there that the person's writing is improving. So that's, that's basically, I think, enough for me to you know, tell you when it comes to a trial. Uh, we're going to probably give you some documents. You can use some sample documents. Obviously, use your own uh, as much as you want. R big things to remember, though, are A, you can always just select a portion of a document if you don't want to have the whole thing for many reasons. No problem. You just simply select it with control, and it will only look at that. Another really important thing to remember that uh, some, sometimes um, I think I don't, I don't communicate well enough to people is that if, if you don't care about an entire category of flags that's coming up, all you have to do is click on ignore all and they're all going to disappear. That, and that's um, something that you know, can save time and make the whole thing more tailored. And then the last thing is, you know, don't, don't ever feel like uh, you, need to, you need to accept a suggestion obviously don't feel like you need to you know, explain to yourself or to a computer why you're not. Uh, these, are, these are simply the best, you know, the best possible suggestions we can make given what, what the algorithms are picking up and it takes you know, a 10th of a second to simply ignore. Uh, that's also why in BriefCatch 2.0, we added these navigation arrows, by the way, and that's to help people who wanna, maybe they wanna come back, right? They don't wanna accept it or reject it. They wanna simply, leave it kind of in purgatory, so to speak, and come back later. And they don't want, they therefore don't want the highlighting to disappear. So that's uh, pretty much it as far as I'm concerned for this trial. Again, thank you very much for trying the product. Uh, you know, we're always uh, working on it and improving it. We have a lot of really great enthusiastic users who make, even after a year or two, continue to make suggestions, uh, ask us to add new rules and the like. And, Love to hear that kind of thing from you as well. And for now, I'll just let you get to it and try the product out on our documents or your own or both. And I'll just thank you one more time for trying Brief Catch. Thanks a lot.